Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 10 of the platform specific series of my Z80 tutorials. So, we're going to be looking at the MSX1 this week, and just like the Game Boy and the um, Sega Master System over the previous weeks, we're going to be looking at how to use the tile array this time to get some text and a bitmap image to the screen. Now, I say this time because this is actually not the first time we've looked at the MSX1. We previously looked at it and we used it as a bitmap display. The trouble is the MSX1 isn't really a bitmap display, it's actually a tilemap display, but it's a tilemap display that can actually show unique tiles on every um, cell of the screen, so we can use it to emulate a bitmap. Unfortunately that's rather slow as I found out in the Grime Z80 project. So during that Grime Z80 project I wrote a tilemap function which allows us to use the MSX1 screen in the same way as we do with the Game Boy and the Master System. Therefore, if you've seen the Game Boy and the Master System series, you're going to recognize these time map functions. But if you haven't, that's fine. You can just watch this episode and you'll understand it just fine. So we're going to define a, um, a font using our standard two color font. And we're going to load that as the first 96 tiles in the time map. And then from 128, we're going to load this Chibico character and we're going to draw that on the screen. And we're going to have a look at how we do that. So the first thing to do is to discuss how the actual memory of the MSX1 screen works. If you've um, followed this before, you may know a little bit about it, but let's start from the beginning. So um, the MSX1 has 16 kilobytes of memory on a VDP chip. And what that means is it's a separate piece of hardware to the main system memory. And so we can't access it directly like we do on the Spectrum and the Amstrad. We have to tell the VDP chip without commands where we want to write our data and then send the data with more out commands and that's why it's quite slow as a bitmap display or at least that's one of the reasons why the system memory is quite complex but we can discuss it in sections so the first thing we do is we define our patterns that we might want to show on the screen and that's in the first 800 bytes of memory here from 0000 to 07FF these are hexadecimal addresses of course so the first one is the tile patterns. Each tile pattern is one bit per pixel. So each line is a single byte and there are eight lines to each tile because it's an eight by eight tile. So you can work out the tile number you want to locate to by multiplying the tile number by eight. And um, because these start at zero, that will be the memory address of the tile you want to change. So that's nice and easy. You'll notice there's a bit of a gap here. And that's because as I've said before, the um, MSX1 can show up to 768 tiles on the screen. However, um, it only uses a single byte for each tile definition. And so it's rather odd in the uh, mode we were using before, the um, tile map was split into thirds and the tile patterns that were defined were different for those thirds. Now, the mode we're using today is the um, more simple mode where there is one tile map used for all three sections of the screen. So, um, tile number one looks the same in the top half of the screen to the bottom half of the screen but in the alternate mode it wouldn't necessarily so um, that's why there's a rather large gap here which is not being used and that's because we're just using 256 tiles in this mode so then from 1800 onwards we've got the tile map and this is the actual tiles that are being shown onto the screen now the, the tile map can't move in half blocks it can only move in full eight pixel chunks which is why you often see msx1 games are quite jerky in their movement but um, it's 32 tiles wide and 24 tiles tall so that 1800 to 1AFF is used by that tile map and so if we want to work out a memory coordinate we just multiply our y by 32 and add our x add that to 1800 and we can work out the memory address that we need to write to then we have some sprite attributes and palette table we're not going to use those today sprite patterns we're also not going to use but we are going to use the color map now in this um, mode, each tile, as well as having um, bitmap data, has color map data. And rather unusually, um, the MSX1 is vastly superior to a system like the uh, ZX Spectrum. The ZX Spectrum has a single byte per 8x8 tile. Rather strangely, the MSX1 has a single byte for every line of that tile. So we've actually got as much byte data for the color map as the tile map. And the way it works is each line of each tile has a foreground and a background color and the first nibble so the first four bits is the foreground and the second nibble is the background so none of the weird flashing options of the spectrum which weren't very useful anyway and none of the brightness problems of the spectrum we'll have a look at the colors the msx1 uses just in a, in a moment so that's the memory addresses we're going to be using um, we did we select the memory address in a way we'll have a look at it in a moment but basically we just write the address 
to the um, control port at uh, address no, hexadecimal 98. We do have to add hexadecimal 4000 to the memory address and that's because that tells the VDP we want to write and not read from that address. But that's pretty straightforward. So here's the example we're going to be doing today. Just hello world and the sprite. There's no color in today's example, but I've programmed the sort of template code to set all of the colors to white on black just so we can start nice and easily. So well, how did I get this bitmap? Well, I used my um, Aku Sprite Editor, which I use on all of these examples. And this, this is my little um, .NET program, which is free and open source. And it can load in a bitmap and then export it in the direct native format that the graphics display requires. And so with regards to the MSX, you've got Save Raw Bitmap, which is for the MSX2. And then today we're going to, we used Save Raw MSX1 Bitmap, which saves it as this 2-bit tile map but in a format where each tile is stored individually. So rather than going horizontally in the spectrum format, it goes down eight lines and then moves on to the next tile and repeats across and then goes down and repeats for the next line and so on until the entire bitmap is exported as the single file. And so that's what we need today for the format of the system. And of course, if I de decide in the future to add more systems to my AcroSprite editor, I just need to program new exporters that will export in whatever format those systems need. And I can assure you, I do plan on supporting a lot more systems in the future. And that's why writing my own Sprite editor, as well as being a bit of fun, is quite handy because now I've got this easy to program C, C Sharp thing that uh, is of course open source, so you can modify it to do whatever you want as well. So even though it's not the best Sprite editor and I had to write it from scratch, it does give me that flexibility to really go wherever I want with this series. So, as I said, we do have to make some modifications to the memory address. So when we actually want to write to a VDP memory address, we can use this set write address command and we call this with H and L. Now, we have to add hexadecimal 4000 to the memory address and we do that by oring in C here, which we've set to C64 here, which is the equivalent of hexadecimal 40. So because we're adding it to a H, that is the equivalent of adding 4000 to HL. You can see there's an option for set read address here. I never actually use it. This is um, this was taken from the Chibi Akamas code. Chibi Akamas only supports MSX2, but the MSX2 was an extension of the MSX1, and so I've copied across this from that, even though Chibi Akamas never reads either. It was in there in the code. This tells the VDP that we want to write, and from then on, any data that we write to our data port at hexadecimal 98 will be put into the memory of the VDP, and so that's how we get to the VDP's memory. So when it comes to defining tiles, and we can have a look at that in a moment, we just tell the VDP what address we want to write to, which is being stored in DE here. So we set DE to the destination, HL to the memory source of the tiles, and BC to the number of bytes we're going to write. So let's start now and have a look at the actual source code. Now, if you've seen the series so far, you'll know that I'm using the exact same example for all of the systems. And this is basically what later became my Grime Z80 code. So um, you can see this works on all of the tile map systems, but Grime Z80 does work on all of the systems I'm covering. So this is kind of the um, precursor to that. So what do we do? Well, we show some text, but um, what we need to do for the bit Chibico bitmap is we need to select our memory address and this is the address of the bitmap data for the Chibico tiles. And the way we do that is, as I said before, we start from tile number 128. We multiply it by eight because there's eight lines per tile. And that is the, becomes the memory address that we need to write to. Because as I said before, the memory for the tile definition starts at 0000. zero, zero, zero so there's nothing to add there. We then define the start of the sprite data, which is down here. And you can see I've got different files for different systems. And this is the MSX1 VDP file here. So that's the one we're going to use here. And the byte count is just the number of bytes in that file. And then we call define tiles, which you can see just here. So define tiles uses the prepare VRAM function, which is here. And that selects the memory address and then just pipes out the data using the out command until all the data has been used up and then returns. So that's how we get the Chibico character into memory. But that's not how we get it onto screen. There's another stage we need to do. And what we do is we fill an area of the screen, in this case, six tiles by six tiles at position three comma three. And we fill that with consecutive tiles. So I'll just show you what that looks like here. 
So each tile is consecutive, so 128, 129, 130, 131, 132, 133 on the first line, and then the next line carries on, and so on and so forth, until we've covered that entire area. And so the, the important thing is that the data in that file that I mentioned, just here, has to be in the correct format so that these tiles are defined in this order, and that's be all done by my sprite editor here. So the sprite editor is doing a lot of the work for us, and that's the way it should be, because you know, we want to program in .NET if we can, rather than program in assembly, because assembly is slow and hard and prone to bugs, whereas C Sharp is fast and simple, and um, we don't have so many problems with bugs, and if they do happen, they're easier to fix. So when it comes to, um, th so this has got our bitmap data into the VDP memory, but we need to now select a cursor position because we are using an XY coordinate here in BC and we need to work out the memory position for that. Well, as I said earlier, all we need to do is multiply the Y position, which is in C, by 32. And that's effectively what this does, shifting it through from L into H as required. And then we just O in B, which is our X position, because of course each tile is just a single byte in the um, tile map memory. And then we O in 18, which is effectively adding 1800 because that's the start of the tile map here. And then we call our VDP set write address, which will move the VDP's write pointer to that memory address so that the next out command we do will actually set the tile. And that's all we need to do there. This is used by the fill area of the tiles function, which you just saw a moment ago, which, which is this here. So we set BC to the start coordinate, HL to the width and height, and DE to the tile number. Now, on the MSX in the way, in the mode we're using, we can only have a tile number up to 256. We're using DE because the um, master system can have 512. So just for compatibility across all systems, we're using a 16-bit register pair. So we just basically use get screen pause to work out the position of the start of the line, write consecutive numbers to the screen, increasing E as we go along, and of course, DE will be will just wrap over onto the next line after the next get VDP screen pass here. So this is just a very simple function to consecutively fill the area like this. Now, I've not used it in this example, and if you want to see it, please look at the Grime Z80 project. The Grime Z80 project is now free for download. It, it was uploaded this week. So please check out my website. Um, you'll see there's links all over this um, page here for Grime Z80. And this will be linked in the comments of um, of this video. So please check out Grimes Z8 if you want to see the colours. But um, the function is here, even though it's not used, and it's just called get col mempos. So get col mempos works a little differently to get VDP screen pods because um, get VDP screen pods works in tiles, and the tile map is 32 wide and 24 tall. As I said, the colours are actually defined at the line level of those tiles. So it's effectively 32 wide and 192 tall. So we need to split out the last three bits, which define the um, line number from 0 to 7 within the tile, and then calculate the, the tile number here. And we have to add that to hexadecimal 2000, because that is the start of the, tile, of the color map, as you can see here. As I said, though, if you actually want to see this in, in use, please check out Grimes at 80 because it's already in use there. And we'll probably have a look at it in a later lesson when we start to do colors on the other systems, because while the other systems are color by default, so to speak, we are going to look at palettes. Now the MSX1 palette is here. Now you'll notice there's two blacks, and that's because color zero is actually a transparent color. But you'll see there's quite a nice range of colors here. And as I said before, the format is a single byte for each line of the tile. And the first nibble is the foreground, and the second nibble is the background. So very straightforward there. And so there you go. That's really the, all there is to it. It's very straightforward. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. We're going to do another lesson on the MSX next week, but this time it's going to be the MSX2. It's going to follow today's example with regards to the tile map, but it's important to understand that the MSX2 isn't actually a tile map based system. It's a bitmap based system that uses um, blitting of chunks of, of the memory from one area to another, which it's very good at. It's very poor at being a bitmap display in the same way as the MSX1 is. And so what I've done is I've written code that works in the exact same way as today's example for the MSX2 that uses the MSX2's copying functions 
to simulate that tile map and that works very nicely on the MSX2 and this is actually going to be the first time we'll look at using the MSX2 VDP as an added bonus the functions that I've written for the MSX2's VDP I also have exactly the same compatible functions for the V9990 which is the um, very fast accelerator board which you can plug into your MSX2 and also the Amstrad CPC now to allow you very fast 16-bit quality graphics on your old 8-bit systems and so if you use my example code you can just swap in that module and it will immediately work for the V9K so that's something to bear in mind as well so I hope you'll follow me for that lesson next week so if you like today's lesson please hit the like button and follow my channel because I'm going to be doing a lot more of these kind of videos we're going to be covering um, doing the palettes on the MSX and also the sound on the MSX and of course we're going to be covering everything that I cover on these, this system on all my other systems as well because the whole point of this series is not just to teach you how to use one system, it's to teach you how to do one thing on lots of different systems. And if you've not checked it out already, please look at the Grime Z80 project in which I spent a week writing a small game on 11 different systems. And that was a successful project and the source code is available for you to download now. So not only can you play it, but you're totally welcome to take that source code and turn it into something new of your own. And that'll mean you can write 11 games in one go, possibly. So that's something for you to try out. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. Thanks for watching and goodbye.